I'm waiting for my screen to show up. Hello. Oops. Dude, I'm like, I'm waiting for it to show up. It's not showing up. Okay, folks, do pray for the internet connection that by the grace and mercy of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, he blesses us with strong internet, no buffering. Please, Lord Jesus. I'm just going to wait a few minutes for enough people to show up, and I'll share some links. We'll begin. Another, another controversial topic, another one. And I'm doing this because a sister had some questions, and I want to answer it to the best of my ability. Trusting the Holy Spirit to save me, to save all of us. Trusting the Holy Spirit to first save us from our flesh and our sinful, wicked desires. Give us the power to live in holiness and purity and worship and love and uh, obedience to our God, the Father, Son, and Spirit. Trusting the Holy Spirit to save us from compromise, save us from prostituting ourselves for fame and fortune. Please, Holy Spirit. Trusting the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> To save us from perverting scripture, make us bold, lions and lionesses of Jesus Christ, as well as full of love and compassion, mercy towards the brethren, the household of God. Right? That's what we trust and hope that that's what the Holy Spirit will do for the glory of Jesus Christ, the Father's beloved Son, and Jesus Almighty name. Yeah, the Father, Son, and Spirit. Father, we love you. Son of God, we love you. Son of God, we worship you. Son of God, we adore you. We love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We adore you. The eternal Spirit of the Father, whom we love and adore, and of the Son, the Lord Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit, have your way with the session. Please, Holy Spirit, do a work in us. Transform us to become more like Jesus Christ. Transform us to live more like Jesus Christ. Transform us to, to worship the way the Lord Jesus worshiped the Father on earth. And to love the way Jesus loved on earth and continues to love from heaven. Transform us to serve others the way the Lord Jesus served while he was on earth. And always to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, save us from our flesh. Save us from our sinful passions. Save us from Satan. Save us from the world. Save us from compromise. Save us from prostituting ourselves for fame, fortune. Save us from being unnecessarily offensive. Save us from tickling ears, from being crowd pleasers. And Holy Spirit, save us from error. Save me from confusion and stammering. Anoint my mouth to speak truth without error. Enable me, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus and to bless the people of God. To recall these scriptures correctly and interpret them correctly by your power. And fill everyone here. Holy Spirit, you know our needs and our level. Fill everyone here with your wisdom, with your knowledge, with your understanding, with your life, with your love, with your presence, with your holiness. And I pray that for myself. And Holy Spirit, I pray also that you bless our loved ones, my precious angels. I miss them. Protect them, Holy Spirit. Save them from irreparable damage from Satan and his influence and convict their mother to fear the Lord Jesus and get right with the Lord and bring them to me so I can raise them. Please, Holy Spirit. And there are people here that have needs. Holy Spirit, you know their needs. Loved ones who may not know Jesus, loved ones who are sick, people may be sick. Holy Spirit, please apply the healing benefits, <clears throat> the saving benefits of the wounds of the Lord Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed spiritually, emotionally, <clears throat> mentally, and physically. Apply them to anyone here who's in need, Holy Spirit. You know them. And the Lord Jesus sent you to guide them to the feet of Jesus. To enable them to love Jesus, to worship Jesus, to unite them to the Lord Jesus, and to receive all the blessings and graces that the Lord Jesus has earned by his life and death on the cross. Apply that to us, Holy Spirit, please. And help me not to be a stumbling block, especially to my neighbors. Protect us from attacks of the enemy, please, Holy Spirit, please. And save us from fighting and bickering. To affirm the truths of Scripture without compromise, but to be gracious and loving on those issues that we can agree to disagree. Holy Spirit, please. It is you who brings perfect unity and sanctification to the body of Jesus Christ. Make us one with Jesus and one with each other by your power. We trust in you. Lord Jesus, we trust in you. Father, we trust in you. We love you, Father. We love you, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Yahweh, Father, Son, and Spirit. May the Lord Jesus make the sound of my voice pleasing to your ears and perfect my sight spiritually and physically. 
Another controversial topic, and I'm going to get a distraction and attacked. I know that. I'm, I'm expecting that because it's a controversial topic nonetheless. Now, I'm going to ask you to help me to help you. Please help me to help you. Okay. Help me to make these sessions. <clears throat> as Christ honoring as possible. Okay. Help me to make these sessions as Christ honoring as possible. Okay. Please do me a favor. Do not pontificate here. Don't debate or argue with me. Don't start side talks, <clears throat> side issues, and distract everyone else and distract me. Please ask sincere questions that you want answers to, not questions to try to set me up. <clears throat> Keep the questions relevant to the topic. Do not bombard the text with irrelevant discussions, please, because I read your text. And let me tell you why I read your text. And God bless you for the super chat. Lord Jesus bless you. Here, uh, I, let me tell you why I read your chat. Because as a teacher, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help me to bless you, to take you to a higher level as the Holy Spirit takes me to a higher level. So I want to make sure you're getting the point. That's why I read your chat to see. Are you understand it? Are you confused? Right? But I am an imperfect, sinful vessel. I have my issues. I'm impatient. I get angry. Right? I lose it. I'm proud. I'm arrogant. May the Holy Spirit save me from those things. I don't want to be those things. Right? I want to be a humble, holy slave of Jesus Christ and serve you for the sake of Jesus. So help me in that area, please. And another thing I want to remind you, you're not going to agree with everything I say. I'm not going to agree with everything you say. That's why there are still differences among us. I want to be a biblicist. I want to follow the Bible as closely as possible, trusting the Spirit to guide me to understand the Bible as perfectly as possible. So there are going to be things that I see in Scripture that you may disagree with. Now, because I know my theology is not perfect, I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to perfect my theology. So there are going to be things I see in Scripture that you as a Catholic will disagree with me. You as an Orthodox will disagree with me. You as a Protestant, whether Baptist, will disagree with me. I don't want you to just believe what I say. Hear me out. Take the verses I give you. Seek the face of the Holy Spirit to show you. Is he right? Let me see it. If he's wrong, save me from it and pray the Holy Spirit will correct me so I don't make those mistakes. Because I know I am mistaken in many areas. I just don't know what areas I'm wrong. I know, let me let me repeat what I mean. I definitely know my theology isn't perfect. You know how I know my theology isn't perfect? Because I'm not perfect. I'm fallen, I'm tainted, and the Holy Spirit is perfecting me to think more like Jesus, to live more like Jesus, right, and to love Jesus more. But until my body's transformed and or Jesus returns, I'm going to have issues in which I struggle with sin and I don't see things clearly. So I know it's not possible my theology is perfect, right? The only ones who have perfect theology are those in, in heaven who are glorified in heaven. So take what I have to say. And if you see I'm wrong, pray for me. I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to mislead you. I don't want to be unnecessarily offensive to you. I don't. I mean it. Pray for me. Pray for me that I don't end up like David Wood, Hater Wood. This guy is a white supremacist, a supremacist who justifies the black Hebrew Israelite hate of the white man, who's a dictator. Who, when he does live streams, he speaks 99% of the time, and then he pontificates in his ignorance, even though he thinks he knows what he's saying, and he misleads people into false doctrines and heresies. So pray for that man, because I can only carry him for so long. Right? Now, by the way, people are going to think I'm serious here. They think, because people say, man, does Sam hate David Wood? Right? I hate to love him, and he loves to hate me. Okay, so pray for him. But guys, help me, guys. Honestly, help me to help you. And pray by the grace of God, this will be a channel where all peoples from all different Christian denominations that are Trinitarian can come and learn and benefit right, and seek the Holy Spirit to show them where I'm wrong, where I'm right, and to help me to correct any bad theology. Even unbelievers are welcome, even if you're not a Trinitarian. You're more than welcome to come here and listen, but don't turn this into a debate channel. If you want to debate me, set something up on a topic. We'll agree we can talk, but this is not a debate session. You can ask me questions. I don't care, but don't try to argue with me, please. Like someone already came before we started the channel. 
some guy named Dave. He said, Protestants come to the Catholic Church. And I don't know if the Catholics are aware, you have Orthodox Christians here and you have Assyrian Christians from the Church of the East, the Church of the East, which is wrongly called Nestorian. They believe their church is the true church. It's apostolic. It was started by the apostles and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, they've preserved true doctrine. So as a Catholic when you come in here and invite people to Catholicism, that means you're disrespecting the Orthodox here, the Assyrian brothers and sisters and the Lord Jesus Christ, because I'm Assyrian ethnically of the Church of the East. That shows insensitivity, and you're going to embarrass yourself because then you're going to have the Orthodox appealing to the same Bible, the same church fathers to show you're wrong, and vice versa. You understand my point, right? Yeah. Addie, can I ask you a question, Addie? Addie. Hold on. Are you upset right now? Because I want to help you not be upset. Addy, are you upset? Tell me, because you're upsetting me. Your presence is really getting me angry. Are you upset because we avoided Hebrews 1, Revelation 1? Rachel, I'm just uh, uh, bantering with David. Me and David are stuck till we die. Addy, answer the question because you don't. You know you're going, right? You're going to be gone if you don't answer. Either way, you're going to be gone. Okay. Are you upset that we're not on Hebrews 1? Okay. Are you upset? No, no, no. Hold on. Are you upset that you're not getting what you want because you're throwing a tantrum? You're like a little baby in diapers. Are you a baby? Are you a self-centered little kid? No, are you? Just want to know. You saw the title, right? You knew what the title was, right, Addy? So why did you come? I, I want to understand. Why did you come? You saw the title, the Queen of Heaven in the Bible. Why did you come? Because you want a Christology, right? I want to ask you a third time nicely. Why did you come to this session when you saw what the title was? Can you explain that to me? Can you explain that to me? Why did you come when you knew what the title was? Because you want a Christology. Thank you, Brother Daniel. God bless you guys. Thank you for the super chat. What do you mean, Daniel? Stop hating Daniel 514. The guy takes shots at me all day, all night. He just took shots at me in the channel. Don't be such a pro-white supremacist yourself. Okay. Addy, my friend, you know you can't be in this session, right? You know you can't be in this session. You know that, right? And Ariel Gonzalez, make sure you write that as one of my hadiths. You know you can't be in the session, right? That's going to be one of my sound hadiths. Make sure you got two or three people in the chain of narration. But Adi, you know you got to go, right, brother? You, you know you got to go. You know that. You, come on, you know you got to go. You know you can't stay. Adi, can you just say one for me? Just say one because you know you can't stay right now. Okay, now do me a favor, Riaz, remove him. Bye-bye, Addy. That will teach you next time not to throw a tantrum like an overgrown baby because you don't get what you want. <laughs> you moved away from the topic. <laughs> Where's my bathy? <laughs> okay. I just said what the rules were, but hey, we're Christian. We got to sin, so I have a reason to repent. All right, now, are we focused now? Are we focused now? Guys, don't tell me what to do. Just be patient with me. Let the Holy Spirit tell me what to do. Let the Holy Spirit guide me. You pray to the Spirit, he'll guide me, okay? Okay, now, let me give you some links before we begin, okay? I wanted to give this yesterday. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide me. Say, Holy Spirit, you are the Almighty God. You're Almighty over us. Guide Sam for the glory of Jesus. Tell me what to do. Please don't. I'm a sinner, right? I don't like, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a Syrian, man. You, you know our history. You've read the Old Testament, right? Did the Assyrians ever like being told what to do? And I'm going to hurt some Assyrians here. Even one of the Assyrian soldiers, the Rabshaka, the Rabshaka, read Isaiah 36, 37. He goes, look at how confused my ancestors were. They tell Hezekiah, isn't it your God who sent us to punish you? And the next chapter says, hey, don't think that your God can save you from the hand of my king. Which of the gods of the nation saved them from the hand of my king? Uh, hold on. Uh, excuse me, uh, Rabshakeh? Yeah. You know, you're my ancestor, right? Yeah, yeah. 
Didn't you just say the Lord God sent you to punish Hezekiah? Yeah. Then why would you be so stupid and in the next breath say that even God, the God of Hezekiah can't save him from Sennacherib, Sanchirub? Are you that stupid to say something so blasphemous so that the angel of the Lord, who is Jesus Christ in his pre-human existence, strikes down 185,000 Assyrian soldiers because of that stupid remark? I mean, you're a special kind of stupid. You know that, right, Reb Sheka? Yeah. But what's my point in bringing up the Assyrians, my ancestors? Okay. We don't like to be told what to do. We don't. It even got to the point we even turned against God. But glory to God, who is a God of infinite love and mercy. He has spared my people. And one of the first groups to convert to Christianity were Assyrians. This is a fact of history. In the first century, Assyrians converted to the Lord Jesus and embraced the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, man. Thank you, Acts 17 Apologetics. He just gave me 100 bucks, so that means he's got the license to bash me. Thank you, sir. All right. Now you can bash me for another two minutes. Now, with that said, let's begin. Let me give you a link. Folks, I've told you that here, Walter Martin was brought up. Walter Martin was brought up. So let me explain Martin, Walter Martin. Walter Martin was a Trinitarian. Walter Martin believed in the Trinity. He believed in three eternal divine persons of the Godhead. Are you with me there? Three eternal persons of the Godhead. But he did not believe that Jesus existed eternally as the Son. Are you guys listening? Because you're going to have to learn a little bit about the different types of Trinitarians. Okay? The different types of Trinitarians. And this is true only of the Protestant sect. And I know the Orthodox, the Catholic, and... The Syrian church is going to say, you see, you Protestants, every one of you think you're a pope. Why? This is only found among Protestants. You will find specific Protestants who believe there are three eternal persons so that God has always existed as a trinity, three eternal persons. But these Protestants do not believe, and I need you guys to pay attention here. These Protestants do not believe that Jesus existed as the son and the father existed as the father before creation so there are three persons that existed in eternity but they were not known as father son and holy spirit these are names these are titles that they took in respect to creation and the redemption of creation you understand what i just said emma emma you're back here you jezebel lover you're back here and you think that you're quoting Revelation because you happen to be one of those that opposes the Nicolaitans when you're a Jezebel lover? Come on, Riaz, you got to be quicker. Okay. Jake, there are Protestants. This is not true of the Orthodox. This is not true of the Catholics that are faithful. This is not true of the Assyrian Church of the East. And it's not even true of the Miaphysites or what we'd call the Coptic Church. Okay, listen to what I'm saying here. This is only true among Protestants. There are Protestants that are Trinitarian. They believe God has always existed as three eternal persons, so they're Trinitarian. But they do not believe. Okay, that's fine, Michelle, that's fine. They do not believe. That's why I said Miaphysites like the Coptics. It's okay, brother. Don't get sensitive that I don't mention every denomination because if I mention every denomination, we'll be here till midnight. Now, these Protestants do not believe that before creation, these three persons were called father and son, right? At least two of the persons were not called father and son. The three persons of the Godhead, the three persons of the Godhead, took on these roles and names after creation, especially after Jesus became man. So they believe that when Jesus is called the Son of God, that's referring to when he became man. And God is the Father, that's referring to his role in relation to the Son or creation. But there hasn't been an eternal Father. There hasn't been an eternal Son, though there are three eternal persons. So one of the persons who is eternal becomes the Father. 
the other person who's eternal becomes the son. You understand what they believe? So they believe there are three eternal persons, uncreated persons of God, but they weren't always known as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One of those Protestants was Walter Martin. Walter Martin. Because someone mentioned Walter Martin. He said he's a great defender of the Trinity. Walter Martin. Thank you, brother. No, Daniel. Daniel, hold on, hold on, guys. Let me stop my session. Daniel wants to tell me how to go about teaching the session on the Queen of Heaven and the Bible. He wants me to go to the book of Revelation. Daniel, how, how do you want me to teach the subject? So you want me to start Revelation? What's the next passage you want me to quote? Toby Jones. So come and tell me how to run the session because you told me not at the bash. You know, because again, notice Daniel is white. Do you see this as a white problem? This superior complex is only true of the white people here. White supremacists that justify the hatred of the black man, the black Hebrew Israelites. God bless you, Toby. Okay. Have you noticed it? Okay. Now, coming back to the issue. Now, I'm just saying, Daniel, hey, bro, it's your world, bro. You're whitey, man. You white man. You white man, it's your world, whitey. Whitey, no nobody. It's your world, sucker. Okay, now coming back to the issue. Walter Martin was a Trinitarian, but he did not believe that Jesus existed as the eternal son. Okay? Even worse, bro. You think you're living at the time of the Caesars, baby. That you were just the emperor, bro. That you're Augustus Caesar, homie. Homie, don't play that. Homie, stop kicking it with my lady Naomi. All right. So Walter Martin, Walter Martin was a Trinitarian. But Walter Martin did not believe Jesus existed as the son before he became flesh. So are you ever with me? You understand? Because I'm going to give you another example of another top-notch Christian philosopher apologist who has debated hundreds of atheists demonstrating that God exists and the Trinity is God and that Jesus is a God man. But does not believe father and son are eternal relationships. Here's the article. Let me get it for you. William Lane Craig. I was going to give this to you guys yesterday. William Lane Craig does not subscribe to Nicene Christology. Does not subscribe to the Trinitarian understanding of the early church. Okay, here it goes. Here's his link. William Lane Craig also, from what I gather, is a, is a well, no, not what I gather. He's also argued for Neo-Apollinarianism. Okay? There's the link. He does not believe Jesus has eternally existed as the Son, and the Father has eternally existed as the Father. He does not believe that these are eternal relationships. He believes there are three eternal persons of the Godhead, three souls of God. So he's a Trinitarian in that sense. But that father and son are roles they took in context of redeeming creation. So he denies Nicene Christology. He denies the eternal begetting of the son, the eternal procession of the spirit. And he says these are outdated ways of discussing the Trinity and they're not biblical. That's what he believes, okay? So just to let you know that. Yep, there's the link again. Everyone with me there? What's my point? You have among Protestants, you have among Protestants, those who are Trinitarian, who believe the Trinity is God, three eternal persons, but do not believe that there's an eternal father or an eternal son, and do not subscribe to the Trinitarianism Christology of the early church. They believe there are three eternal persons, but the names Father and Son are roles that they took in respect to creation. And notice this is only true for Protestantism. You don't find this among Assyrian Church of the East. You don't find this among the Catholic theologians or the Orthodox theologians or even the theologians who subscribe to what's known as Miaphysitism or monophysitism. Miaphysite. Miaphysitism. Monophysitism. No, I didn't say all Protestants. I said it is among Protestants, Lewinter. I know you know what I meant. Please don't make me say and repeat myself. 
please, Levanter. I know you like to share a lot and say a lot and, and you know, speak a lot. But, brother, please, you know what I meant. Okay, hold on. Let me correct here. I'm going to get distracted. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Hold on. Sorry. This is why I love live streams. So I can rebuke people live. Gotcha. We're going to begin now. Now we're going to begin. Hold on. I look kind of, when I do that face, I look stupid. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Hold on. Okay. Did you get on my YouTube channel? I sent you the link. Do I have to now? Send you a video of how to then click on the link, come on my YouTube channel. Do you want me to send you the video too? Okay. Are you on my, are you watching me now? I am on the phone, but I want to go on the laptop. Okay. M Michelle, you know you have serious issues. Can I do. I, can I get you a psychologist maybe and some medication? You're calling me in the midst. Everyone's listening to you right now. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Bye, bye. All right. I'll bye. let you. Go. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay. And I decided to wear this shirt because it says friends, not because I like the show. I hate the show. I'm wearing this shirt because I want to be your friend. I want us to be friends. Hey, Daniel514, are you upset again, dude? Wow, man. He's stuck in the knife. You want to leave? Can you send this guy bye-bye? Go ahead, Riaz. You know you're the man to send people bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Are you ready? Are we ready now? Are you ready now? Michelle, brother. Brother Michelle, you need to leave today's session too, brother. Okay? The today's session is not for you. You're chiming in too much trying to correct me, to try to impress me with your knowledge, and I'm not impressed. So, Michelle, you need to go today, all right? Maybe you can come back tomorrow. Okay, Michelle, brother? No hard feelings? All right. Okay, everyone ready now? Now we got the distractions out of the way. Can we focus? Are we now focused? Can we get into the subject now? Because now I'm ready. We're talking about a controversial subject. Now, iron sharpens iron, and I thank the Lord for you guys and your questions because sometimes I'll be saddling the fence on an issue, and I don't go deep into the issue because it's not really relevant for me. But then I'm asked a question about an issue that I haven't really gone deep into because I don't really think it's important for me personally. And then I study it, and I try to ask the Holy Spirit to get me to the point where I can have an informed position, right? So I decided I'm going to talk about this issue because it came up, Queen of Heaven. A sister asked me a question about the Queen of Heaven. So let's get ready. Let's get ready. Let's talk about it. Now, you're probably going to disagree with some things I say. That's okay. Take what I have to say. Go back and study it. Meditate on it. See where I'm wrong and ask the Spirit to show me if I'm in error. And guide me all truth because I don't want to tickle ears and I don't want to be unnecessarily offensive. I don't want to be nice and agree with you just to get you to like me while I compromise scripture and offend the Lord. And at the same time, I don't want to offend you unnecessarily. So now that's it. One of the objections raised about the Queen of Heaven was, well, in Jeremiah chapter 7 and Jeremiah 44. Now let's let's focus, guys. Jeremiah chapter 7 and Jeremiah 44. Okay. God condemns the Jews of Jerusalem for offering sacrifices, baking cakes to the queen of heaven. See, here we go, Roman. Hey, Roman, go back to Rome. Send Roman out of here too. Send him out of here. Okay. Riaz, come on. You're the man. You know you're quick, bro. Okay. Now, years earlier, I too used Jeremiah 7 and Jeremiah 44 to attack this belief in Mary as the queen of heaven. I too, I even wrote an article years ago that a Christian actually published. Ten reasons why I'm not Catholic. Yeah, okay. Michelle, how did you stay here, man? I was getting rid of you because you're chiming in about monophysitism and meophysitism and trying to correct me again. How did you get here, man? Didn't I say you need to go for today? Today's session is not for you, brother. Anyway, now, years ago, Years ago, I used to use Jeremiah 7, Jeremiah 44 to condemn this teaching of Mary as the queen of heaven. So I understand. I understand. You with me there? I understand. 
the reluctance and the fear of embracing this doctrine because I too use those passages because I too assume that to call anyone queen of heaven was to be pagan. You with me there? Was to be pagan. So you understand where I'm going with this now? Are you ready now to sojourn with me, to walk this path with me, to see where the Holy Spirit will guide us as we trust the Holy Spirit to guide us for the glory of Christ? Okay. Now, why was I wrong? Why was I wrong? Because God was condemning the pagan belief in a pagan goddess that was the consort of a pagan god with whom he had sex, whom the pagans thought was the queen of heaven, i.e. Ishtar. So it's not the queen of heaven, per se, that God is condemning, the concept. He's condemning the worship of a goddess. The Babylonians believed Ishtar was a goddess, the queen of heaven, who is the consort of their chief god, and they had sex. That's what God is condemning. That's what God is condemning. Now, you have to be careful with assuming that just because God is condemning a pagan practice, that somehow that practice or title isn't biblical, because what you find in paganism is the aping of biblical truths. In other words, even among the pagans, they would believe things and say things about their gods and goddesses that are true, not of their gods and goddesses, but of the true God. Where were they wrong? To ascribe those characteristics and titles to their gods and goddesses. For example, let me give you an example of a biblical truth that the pagans believe, but believed about their gods. Are you ready for me to explain this? Okay. Are you ready for me to explain this? All right. In Daniel 7, we're not going to post it. I'm just going to walk you through this. In Daniel 7... Verses 9 to 10 and verses 13 to 14. Now remember, Daniel's writing in Babylon. He's writing in Babylon. In Daniel 7, verses 9 to 10 and verse 13 to 14, he has a vision where he sees a figure that looks very old called the Ancient of Days. He's got white hair symbolizing that he's old. He's, he's of years. And he calls him the Ancient of Days. Then he sees another figure who looks like a man, son of man, riding the clouds of heaven. Now, remember, this is in Babylon. Now, what's interesting? The pagans, specifically the Canaanites, believe in a high god named Il. Guys, pay attention. El, Il. He was known as the father of years. In fact, here's, here is a depiction of him. He was called Abu Shamima. And Il is the gray-bearded ancient one full of wisdom. Malku, king, and Abu Shamima. So you understand, this pagan god called Il was described as also looking old. Looking old and had a gray beard. And he was called the father of the gods. And the gods of heaven were the sons of God, sons of Il. And one of his sons named Baal, Baal would ride the clouds. He was known as the cl uh, cloud rider. So does that mean that Daniel is now promoting paganism because he describes the true God as also an older figure with white hair and another divine person riding the clouds, which for liberal scholarship, they will tell you that's because Daniel's influenced by the imagery of Il as an older gray-bearded man and as Baal, Baal or Baal, the writer of the clouds. No, yeah, sure. You're actually blasphemous because you disgust me with your stupidity. So, yeah, sure, get out of here. Don't pontificate and expose yourself for being stupid. You haven't even heard the case, and you're speaking like an idiot. Get him out of here, please. Okay. See, this is what you get when you get stupid people who think they know Scripture, who think they know Scripture, and pontificate and bark without listening to the case. Okay. Are you with me there? Does that mean that Daniel was a pagan or influenced by paganism by describing the true God and his son, the Lord Jesus, right? In imagery that resembles the way the pagans would describe Il and Baal. Baal.
Are you with me there? Would anyone say that Daniel's being pagan? But it's going to get worse for you guys that have a problem with this. And i explain to you what I mean. Go to Acts 17, 28. Acts 17, 28. It's going to get worse for you guys. Okay, it's going to get worse. Let me show you what I mean. It's going to get worse. Acts 17, 28. Guys, pay attention here. Paul speaking to the Athenians at the Areopagus, Areopagus, Mars Hill, speaking to the Athenians. Look what he says. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said. He's quoting a Greek poet to the Greeks. You Greeks, even one of your poets said, for we are also his offspring. Did you see what Paul did? Paul quotes to the Greeks, one of their Greek poets, who said that we are the children of God. We are the offspring of God. But guys, you have a problem here. Luis said you have a problem. The poet that Paul quoted was talking about Zeus, that we are the sons of Zeus. Because in the Greek mythology, Zeus was the father of the gods, like Il was to the Canaanites. And we are the offspring of Zeus. So why did Paul quote what a Greek poet said about Zeus and apply it to the true God? The poet was talking about Zeus. He wasn't talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Are you listening, Luisa? Secondly, you know what the Greeks called Zeus? This is a fact. I'm not making it up. You know what the Greeks called Zeus? In Greek, they called him, and I'm going to say it the Erasmian way, Hatheos, Hapater, or Otheus, Opater, Otheus, Opater, Hatheos, Hapater, meaning the God, the Father. The very names given to the Father of Jesus Christ. Did you know that? In the New Testament, written in Greek, the Father of Jesus is called Otheos, Hatheos, Hapater, the God, the Father. So does that mean that the Christians are being pagan because they're taking titles and names that the pagans use for their gods and goddesses but applying it to the true God? Yes, Joel Glenn Davis, what he's doing is he's saying that characteristic is true. We are the offspring of God, but you got the wrong God. This is true of the unknown God, not of Zeus. So notice what Paul is doing, okay? Notice what Paul is doing. He's taking things that are true but wrongly applied to false gods and goddesses. So he's Christianizing them. He's saying that is true but not of that God because that God is a false God. It's true of the true God. That's the point. No, it's not a polemic. Jesus is our Passover lamb. Unless you want him to make Zeus the God, the father of Jesus. What he's saying is, see, even you guys got this part right. We are the offspring of God, but you got the wrong God. The God whose offspring we are isn't Zeus. It's the one who raised Jesus from the dead. You understand now what he's doing? You catch it or no? Before I move on to the point, I don't know if Luis is here. So what's the point? There are titles. There are ascriptions. There are functions that the pagans attributed to their gods and goddesses that the Bible also attributes to the true God. In other words, titles such as queen of heaven in of themselves are not wrong. It's the wrong use of the titles that God condemns. You with me there? It's the wrong use of the title. In other words, to say that Zeus is the God, the Father, we are his offspring, that's wrong. Not because God isn't our Father and that we're, we aren't his offspring. That's true, but it's not true of Zeus. So Ishtar is not a goddess. She's not the queen of heaven. She's a false goddess. It's wrong to view her as a goddess and call it that sin. But that doesn't mean it's sin if God takes one of his servants who love Jesus and are born of the Spirit and exalts them to share in the reign of Christ as king or queen, queen over creation. You get what I'm trying to establish before I go to the proof? 
Here we go, Patty. Hey, Patty, are you that stupid? You think you're going to stand last year that long chiming in before I finish the case? So you bark and I can muzzle you then? Get Patty out of here. See? Dumb, stupid agents of the devil. They can't even wait for me to finish my case. Okay? Now, folks, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I was on the other side where I used to condemn Catholics for calling Mary the Queen of Heaven because I said it was pagan. As I said, I'll find the article so you know I'm not lying. I wrote an article because I took bits and pieces from certain books and compiled them together in one article. And one of the arguments I used to condemn the Catholic Church was you call Mary the Queen of Heaven. And now I'm telling you I was wrong. I was mistaken. I didn't interpret those passages correctly. And I'm not trying to make you believe in that. What I'm trying to say is, if you reject this belief that Mary is the queen of heaven, do so for other reasons than citing Jeremiah 7 and Jeremiah 44. Okay? Jeremiah 7, Jeremiah 44 won't convince anyone that has studied the historical context and know what God is condemning there. You, you get my point? If you get an informed Christian who's of the Orthodox faith or the Catholic faith or the church, they're going to know, dude, come on, man. You're getting desperate here. The context is a pagan goddess that is worshipped as the queen of heaven, the consort of their chief god with whom he has sex, and you're going to now somehow transfer this over to our belief of the Blessed Mother? That's okay, Luisa. I'm not trying to tell you. So I'm just trying to show you. Think biblically and critically and trust the Holy Spirit to guide you. So, Constance, I just spent 20 minutes wasting my time on you. Do you need to get out of here? Send Constance out of here, too. Yeah. Why is ABCD still here? Why is this dog still here barking in my channel? Come on, Riaz. You're disappointing me. You're dropping the ball. Send these dogs out of here. We don't want these guys. Do you guys want them here? I don't want them here. They're distracting, being used of the devil, their father. Thank you, Ariel Gonzalez. Ariel just made another point. Augustus Caesar was called the son of God, so we shouldn't call him the son of God. Baal was the son of God, so we shouldn't call Jesus son of God. Okay, everyone with me now? Are you getting the point so I can move to the positive case? Because I'm going to make a positive case. Are you with me now to make a positive case? Can we now go to the second point? Because I'm trying to show you. Okay, Carly, I will. I'm trying to show you, but Carly, some people don't be too quick because we got some brothers and sisters here. I'm trying to show you how not to misinterpret Scripture. Do not apply Jeremiah 7.44. I used to do it. Lord, forgive me. I was mistaken. I was mistaken. I was wrong. I was wrong. Okay? Now, can we move to the second po point? Does the Bible teach the, those who are redeemed in Jesus, those who are born of the Spirit of Christ, which would definitely include his blessed mother, definitely include her. If she's not in heaven, none of us are going to be in heaven. <laughs> those who are born of the Spirit, those who are united Christ, Will they share in the kingship of Christ? Will they rule as king and queens over heaven? Can I now make that point? Can I make that point before we move on? Okay. Matthew 19, 28. I have several steps that are biblical, and I'm going to try to tie them in together by the power of the Holy Spirit, trusting him to save me from error and blessing you and saving you from my mistakes. Holy Spirit, take over, please, for the glory of Christ. Okay, Matthew 19, 28. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the re regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So here, the 12 disciples will sit on 12 thrones as judges and rulers. Did you catch it? I will come and sit on my throne of glory, and you too will sit on thrones. Ruling and judging, right? That's the first step. Now, be patient with me. Let me walk you through this. Please, don't chime in. Just let me walk you through this. And if you still think I'm wrong, God bless you. Honestly, may he bless you.
But let me make my point. Luke 22, 28 to 30. Luke 22, 28 to 30. Okay. I, I hate it when they text me. I'm doing talking, man. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. All right. Luke 22, 28 to 30. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials, and I bestow upon you a kingdom. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to give your followers, specifically the, the disciples, a kingdom, Lord? I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed on me, one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Here, so here again, you, the 12, you follow me, I bestow on you a kingdom. I'm going to give you a kingdom. Are you folks? You get it? I'm gonna give you a kingdom. Revelation 2 26 to 28. Revelation 2 26 to 28. Let me see something here. Okay. And he who overcomes, now this is to all believers, folks. This is to all believers. Pay attention to all believers. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Any true believer that overcomes, I'll give you power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father. Did you catch it? And I will give him the morning star. Wait, wait, wait. Lord Jesus, what did you just promise every believer who overcomes? Every believer overcomes, I will give them power to rule the nations and then shatter them to pieces if necessary with a rod of iron. I will make you kings and queens ruling over unbelievers. Do you guys catch it or no? Before I move on to the next point. This doesn't include Mary? Yeah, that is Psalm 2. Psalm 2, verse 8 to 9, which I was about to show in a minute. So this doesn't include Mary, huh? So wait, Jesus is going to give overcomers a kingdom to rule with him, but not marry his blessed mother. You with me there? Is that what you're telling me? Revelation 3, verse 21. Jay, you were not here yesterday then, Jay Michelle, and you're chiming in again out of ignorance. There is no Catholic who denies... That all believers will reign with Christ as king and queens. But Mary has the highest rank because I already established yesterday the Bible teaches though we all rule as king and queens, some will be higher in rank than others. So, Jay, please don't chime in until you listen to yesterday's session. Please, brother. Okay, now read with me. Revelation 3.21. Read with me. Revelation 3.21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also ever came and sat down with my father on his throne. Okay, guys. Is Mary an overcomer? The Blessed Mother of our Lord, is she an overcomer? Is she an overcomer? But Jesus says, whoever overcomes will sit on my throne with me. Is she seated on the throne of her son? Whether you want to say it's metaphorical still. Is she seated on the throne of her son? What's the problem then? What's the problem? Okay. Let's go to Revelation. I'm saying Ephesians 2 verse 6. Ephesians 2 verse 6. And I argued my way into this position biblically. Now, Ephesians 2, verse 6. Read with me. And raised us up. Paul is talking about believers on earth. We on earth have been raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. One more time, Ephesians 2, verse 6. And born again Christian. You want to get blocked for that? 
Again, I'm going to embarrass you for embarrassing yourself. I'm going to help you embarrass yourself. Catholics and Orthodox, do you believe that Mary alone rules with Christ? No matter how many times you correct these guys, they still don't want to listen. Does Mary alone rule with Christ? Okay. Does she alone rule? So why are you born again, Christian, attacking straw man? Why don't you be open to the Bible and let the Bible speak? Stop muzzling the Bible and be a liar and claim you follow the Bible. I don't get it. I swear. I don't. Guys, have I appealed to tradition right now? Have I or have I, have I appealed to the Bible to make the case? Have I appealed to tradition? Or was it I'm giving you Bible? Okay. Ephesians 2 verse 6. Ephesians 2 verse 6. Listen to yesterday, Delkith, and then listen to this. Yeah, I know, Anna, but I'm keeping to the Bible, lest they say, so you're just going with tradition. Guys, read with me again. Paul talking about believers on earth. Believers on earth. Well, listen more attentively, born-again Christian. By the grace of God, you'll learn. Believers on earth, Paul says, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Paul says, right now, you on earth, made alive in the spirit, you now sit with Jesus in heaven. You are enthroned with Jesus in heaven. We're going to get there, chronically Catholic. See, you're not being patient, brother. Allah, Akbar. Be patient, man. I'll get there, man. Allah, Akbar. Just be patient. I'll get to the queen mother. Calm down. Catholic, breathe here. Catholic... Azariel will quote the Sahih Hadith for me. Logos. And then on this day, Ariel narrates from Jai who narrated that Sam told chronically Catholic Logos. <laughs> Anna doesn't like it. <laughs> Poor Anna. She's like, okay. Guys, are you with me there? All right. Do you believe Ephesians 2 verse 6? Do you believe Ephesians 2 verse 6? What did Ephesians 2 verse 6 say for the third time? And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places, Christ Jesus. Do you believe right now, if you're born again, a born again Christian, you are positionally in heaven with Christ, seated with him? Meaning you share in his rule, you share in his sovereignty over creation, which is why demons are subject to you? Do you believe that? Wouldn't that also be true of the saints who are now in heaven? Are they now ruling with him or they stop ruling with him? Are they seated with him or they're not seated with him? Are they seated with him or they're not seated with him? They're seated with him, right? Now convince me that doesn't include his blessed mother. So the blessed mother of our Lord, she's not ruling with him in heaven. She's not seated with him? Okay. You with me there? Okay, now let's go to Ephesians 1, 19 and 23. I have no idea what you mean, Kevin. When you say own our own lands, I have no clue what you mean. If I have to explain that to you, man, we're going to have problems, brother. But I love you, man. Just be, be just be thankful you're ruling something. Okay, Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Focus, focus and read. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Guys, where is Jesus? Seated at the right hand of God above heaven. Ephesians 2, 6. Where are you? Seated with Christ. And where's Christ? Seated at God's right hand above creation. Okay. Now watch here. 
far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Let's put post Ephesians 1, 22 to 23 one more time. Ephesians 1, 22 to 23. Okay. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to, to be head over all things to the church. You know what that means? For the sake of the church, his body, which he fills with his blessings and graces and love and mercy. For the sake of his body, he's now subjected everything so that everything will be under the control of his church. That's what it's saying right there. Before I move on, I want this to sink in. Did it sink in? The church is the spiritual body of Christ. He's the head. And the church is made of redeemed believers. And if you're a redeemed believer, then you are part of the church. And if you're part of the church, you're connected to Christ who's your head, the source of your life. And if everything's subject to him, it's subject to you because he subjected all things for your benefit, for your sake. So notice it said we are seated with him. Ephesians 1 says he's seated at the right hand of God above all creation. If you're seated with him, are believers in heaven still seated with him? Are they? Does that include the mother of Christ? I mean, tell me honestly. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. But does that include the mother of Christ? So why would you have a problem with her being the queen of heaven? I still don't get it. If you're going to be biblical, what's the problem, man? Be honest with me. Now, remember, I'm a guy that came and I opposed it. And I thought it's pagan. But then as I start thinking upon the passages, okay, right? And there is no Orthodox here. There is no Catholic here. There is no Assyrian church member here that says that Mary rules to the exclusion of everybody else. They believe she holds the highest position. And I showed you from yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday? There are ranks in the kingdom. Some are higher than others. We all rule, but some will be higher than others. I showed you that yesterday. It's biblical. Can't deny it. So then what's the problem with believing, right, that Mary is a queen, the queen of heaven, the highest of all creatures? You understand what is if Okay, you may say, well, it's not explicit in the Bible. Okay, I grant you that. It's not explicit in the Bible. That's fine. But what would the problem be if you believe that? Is there support for it in the Bible? Of course. You get what I'm saying? You with me there? I know what the objection is. Well, it's not explicitly taught. Okay, that's all right. A lot of things are not explicit in the Bible. Remember I said, how do we derive doctrine? Let me explain to you how we derive doctrine. Follow with me. Either by explicit statements of the Bible or what we call by necessary inference. What do I mean by necessary inference? We piece all the verses together and then try to derive correct interpretation and a doctrine from what the Bible teaches as a whole. Because sometimes the Bible doesn't come out and say something black and white. And that's what I was showing you right now. If believers are seated with Christ, Mary's a believer. She's seated with Christ. If believers in heaven continue to see, to reign with Christ, she's reigning with Christ. Well, if she's reigning with Christ, she's a female. That makes her the queen of heaven, not the king of heaven. You understand what I did right now? Yeah. No, uh, Luvanter, that's what I said. It's not explicit. It's something implicit. And the reason why people say she's the highest, because this is going to lead to another point. 
The mother of the king is the queen mother. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to get there. So that's what they're going to. They're going to add that piece to then show you, wait, the mother of the king is the queen mother. She's the queen mother, right? And if she's the queen mother, that means everyone else is subject to her. I'll get there. I'll, I'll get there. Okay. Okay, so now let me give you another line of evidence. If you guys be patient, I'll get there. Yeah. Are, are we ready? Because too many texts, man. Too many texts. I don't know if you're asking me questions here. If you're asking me questions not related topic, you're wasting my time and yours. Oh, so the Lord saved you, and until he saved you, you thought Mary was the... <laughs> I hear some stupid stuff sometimes, honestly. I like this one. This was a doozy. You know, before the Lord saved me, I thought Mary was the mediatrix between God and me, but now I'm saved. You see? Because I'm saved, I know better, so that's a false doctrine. And look at the Einstein over here. Einstein, Lennox Boss, Einstein, he's quoting Jeremiah 7 where it says the queen of heaven. Uh, Sharbo, because there are things in the Catholic Church I don't agree and accept. So if I'm wrong, the Spirit will show me. I can't just be a Catholic to make you happy, brother. I want to make Jesus happy. I want to make the Father happy and the Holy Spirit happy. So there are things I see in the Catholic Church I don't see it in the Bible or in history. That's just my conviction. If I'm wrong, you pray, right? Because you're not going to make me see it. You're not going to make me see it. The Holy Spirit's going to make me see it. Right? Even I love your name, Sharbo. A great saint, Sharbo. Okay. Anyway, guys, are we, are we, yeah, but that's what I'm saying, Max. You got a Johnny come lately, Max Prankton, and he quotes Jeremiah 7, 18, the queen of heaven. I just got done showing why you shouldn't use that passage. You see why I'm laughing? See, there goes Rachel again. Rachel, I'm going to ask you one question. If you keep pestering me on this, I'm going to have to send you on your merry way. Rachel, do you ask people to pray for you? Do you ask people on earth to pray for you? Rachel, uh, do you ask people to pray for you? Yeah, I just want to say yeah. Guys, let me just deal with Rachel because see these comments really, again, show ignorance of what's going on here. Rachel, please don't waste my time. Can you answer the question? I know, Gilgamesh, I do lose it. I get Jiru on them because they shun me, okay? Rachel, you're going to get blocked in five seconds because you're not answering. Guys, send her on her way because she's not answering. She got cold feet right now. Get her out of here, okay? Okay, let's go back. Are we ready? Are we ready now? Are we ready to take a second step? Okay. We know Jesus is the king of kings, right? I know, Brother Sharbo, you're not. I understand. We know Jesus is the king of kings, right? Revelation 17, 14, and 19, 16. Revelation 17, 14, and 19, 16. All right. Revelation 17, 14, 19, 16. You got it, man, this is going to be harder than I thought. I thought it was going to be like people are going to listen and it's going to be smooth sailing and I can finish this topic and whoo, the people won't stop with the questions. All right, Revelation 17, 14. These will make war with the Lamb and the Lamb will overcome them for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, so Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of, Lord of Lords, right? God bless you, Lennox. I love you too, bro. My grandmother was Besneta. She had Besneta blood in her. Right? Okay. King of King, Lord of Lords. Okay. Galatians 4, verse 26. Let me show you something. Galatians 4, verse 26. Guys, just be patient with me. And let me walk you through this. Galatians 4, verse 26. Okay. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. Okay, Louisa, did you know you have a heavenly mother? Heavenly Jerusalem, the Jerusalem in heaven, where God the Father appears visibly, and the angels are there, and Christ is there in his glorified body, and believers are there. That's your mother? 
That's your mother, right? Okay, guys, follow with me. Louisa, you know, the heavenly Jerusalem is your mother, right? There it is, Galatians 4.26. She's the mother of all believers, right? You guys see that? Okay, you saw that, right, Louisa? It's right there, Galatians 4.26. And what is this heavenly Jerusalem? Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Man, this year. Okay. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. What is heavenly Jerusalem? But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. So heavenly Jerusalem is the city of the living God where there is angels there, a host of angels, and believers having church there. Guys, they're having church in heavenly Jerusalem. To the church of those who first believe, that's right there, who are righteous in heaven, and in heavenly Jerusalem, God is there, the judge of all. God is there. To the spirits of just men made perfect, the spirits of the saints who died, the spirits of believers who died, they're there. Who else is there? Jesus is there, verse 24, to Jesus' mediator of new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. And that's where Jesus presents his blood, his sacrifice to atone for us. Okay, now, heavenly Jerusalem is our mother. And that's the place where God the Father appeals visibly. Christ is there in his glorified body, presenting his sacrifice for our sins. Angels are there. Believers, believers who've died are there as spirits. Okay, now, Revelation 21, verses 1 to 2. Thank you, Gilgamesh. God bless you, brother. Revelation 21, verses 1 to 2. Now watch. Now I saw a new heaven, new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Pay attention, guys. New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. So heavenly Jerusalem is coming down. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, folks. Question. Heavenly Jerusalem will be coming down at the end of the age when God ushers in a new heaven, new earth. But it says heavenly Jerusalem is a bride. It's someone's bride. Someone's bride. Whose bride? Revelation 21, verses 9 to 14. Revelation 21, verses 9 to 14. Watch here. You'll see where I'm going with this. I'm slowly making a case. I'm still not there. So don't rush me, guys. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. I don't need to read the rest of it. Heavenly Jerusalem is whose bride? The lamb's bride, the lamb's wife. Okay, help me understand logic here, Luis and everyone else. If the Lamb is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and he has a bride, here it's heavenly Jerusalem, here it's heavenly Jerusalem, would that make his bride the queen, the queen of heaven? Let me understand. Before I move on, the Lamb is the King of Kings. Heavenly Jerusalem is his bride, so she's not a queen. Okay, what, what am I getting at? I'm not using this to prove Mary's the queen. I'm using this to prove to you there is a queen in heaven because the Lamb's bride has to be a queen because her husband is a king. Last time I checked, if your husband's the king, by golly, that makes you the queen. Right? And we're not going to read this, but in Ephesians 5, 22 to 33. Sherbal, that means something else, brother. Don't confuse yourself. You're confusing too many issues here. When it says the bride of the Holy Spirit, it means it's the Holy Spirit who came and caused Mary to get pregnant with the human nature, physical body of Christ without sex. So it's using the bride of the Holy Spirit 
in a spiritual metaphorical sense, showing that he's the one who caused her to get pregnant without sex. So understand what the metaphor is. You get my point? Sharbal Aziza? Don't confuse the issues here. That's being used in a different context, in a different sense. Okay, now, in Ephesians 5, not yet, Mike. You want me to get off topic, bro? You want, me, you want to ask a question and disrespect everyone and we get off topic? It's up to you. Now, write this down. Ephesians 5. No, born again Christian. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Born again Christian. Did I not just say heavenly Jerusalem is our mother? Galatians 4.26. Thank you, BMW. Galatians 4.26 says heavenly Jerusalem is our mother, the mother of the church. And in Revelation, heavenly Jerusalem is the bride of Christ. The city that we live in, the city we dwell in, the city of God, heaven is our dwelling place. And being our dwelling place, she's spoken of as our mother, metaphorically speaking. And that heavenly city is going to come to the earth because God and the host of heaven will be on earth. Okay. So in that context, the heavenly city is our mother because we dwell in it. And the heavenly city is said to be the bride of the lamb. It belongs to him. But now let me answer your other question. There is a sense in which the church is the bride of Christ as well. How do I know? Ephesians 5, write this down, folks. Ephesians 5, 22 to 33. There it says the church is the bride of Christ. So, yes, there the spiritual bride of Christ is the church. The church being one with Christ in the spirit, connected to the Christ by the spirit, is his bride and his body. So now let me ask you a question. If the church is the bride of Christ and Christ is the king, what is the church? A handmaid or is she the queen? Queen, right? Is Mary part of the church? Is Mary, the mother of our Lord, part of the church? So she's a queen too. Wow, but I thought calling her queen of heaven, that's pagan, man. That's pagan, dude. But wait, if heavenly Jerusalem is the queen, that's pagan, dude. John, what you doing in Revelation, bro? Don't you know Jeremiah 7, homie? Homie, don't play that. There ain't no queen of heaven, son. Surprise, David. Exactly, Louisa. But don't forget, Louisa, remember what I said yesterday? John Curry, I guarantee you, I will decimate your objection and show that you're weak. I'll obliterate you because of your arrogance. I don't love you. Give me your best shot so I can make a case out of you. Okay. Now, Louisa, let me go back and share my point with you. Okay. Let me share my point with you. You're a queen as well, but remember what I said yesterday from those passages? No, no, don't love me. Even, even my enemies claim to love me, right? John, I will decimate you. You're a big mouth. You're a coward. Set up a debate. Because you think you know the Bible. You're a joke. You're a clown. But coming back to Louisa. Okay. No, not you, Louisa. Yeah, love me a lot. I know. Louisa, coming back to you. Yes, you're a queen. But remember what I said from the passages yesterday? Remember I said the passages? Not everyone will have the same rank in heaven. Right, Louisa? Even believers who rule, some will be of higher rank than others. Remember, I showed you those verses yesterday. I want to repeat it. Yeah. John Corey is one of these guys who thinks he's qualified to teach the Bible, but he's qualified to mislead people, right? He's one of those dangerous types that thinks he knows the Bible. And that's sad, okay? Anyway, so you get my point? The whole point is all believers are kings and queens, but in the body of Christ, some are higher rank than others. Some hold higher positions than others. You want me there? Luisa, I showed you those verses yesterday. Do you want me to look at those verses again? Faith, if you went to yesterday's lesson, Jesus told you. Be a servant here. Humble yourself here. Serve others. Preach the gospel. Provide for their needs. Deny yourself. 
and you'll be great in the kingdom. Let me just give you the verses, write them down. I'm not going to quote them, but write them down. Are you ready? Are you ready to write down the verses? We read them yesterday in yesterday's session, but just write down the verses. Matthew 5, 19. Okay. Matthew 5, 19. Matthew 11, verse 11. Write them down. Matthew 5, 19. Matthew 11, verse 11. Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28. Oh, look at this clown. Okay. Johnny, let me embarrass you. Hold on, hold on. Did Mary do the will of God? Mary do the will of God? John Khoury? You're a joke, dude. Please, do not teach because I'm going to come after you and tell people you're dangerous because you're a Bible pervert. Hold on. Johnny, did Mary do God's will? Did Mary do God's will? Matthew 5, 19. Matthew 11, 11. Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 3, 11 and 15. She did, okay. So why would you be that stupid to quote Mark 3, 31, 35, out of context, when Jesus wasn't saying that she's not his mother, but he was saying that his true mother is the one who does the will of his father, and Mary did the will of his father. Luke 1, 39, Luke 1, 45, read all the way to 52, and then in Acts 1, 14, Mary is there as a faithful obedient handmaid of her son, waiting for his son to pour out the spirit on her. Why would you be that stupid to misquote scripture like that? Why would you embarrass yourself and think you have a good argument when I've been there and done that? Okay. Acts 1.14, quote Acts 1.14. And by the way, Alex, I'm still a Protestant, by the way. But I know stupid arguments when I hear it. Acts 1.14. Here you go. Acts 1.14, let's post it. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. There is Mary in the upper room with the disciples worshiping, waiting for a son to pour out the Holy Spirit. No, he didn't. Johnny, are you really that stupid? Tell me if you're stupid so I can go down to your level. The same Jesus who said that someone can be greater than another in the kingdom. The same Mary who was filled with the spirit who said all generations will call me blessed from now on. The same Mary that had an unborn child in the womb, six months in the womb, hear her voice and he leapt for joy because he realized that's the sound of my, the mother of my Lord speaking. That same Mary, an ordinary person, you wicked dog. That same Mary, huh? The, from the same Bible? The same Mary that Elizabeth filled the story said, the filled the Holy Spirit saying, the mother of my Lord comes to my house. That same Mary from that same Bible. That same Mary from the same, you kidding me, man? You're joking, right? Can you stop while you're ahead? Can you stop? Yeah, Gilgamesh, the stupidity is like on a high level, Nasha. Magnificent. Can I finish my topic, brother? Jay Michelle, whether you've heard or not, that shows your stupidity again. Don't impose your ignorance on Catholics. Let me again have the Catholics repeat. Catholics, one more time, help me. Though you believe Mary is the greatest creature and she is the queen of heaven and the highest ranking creature in the kingdom, do you deny that other believers reign with Christ as king and queens? Do you believe that believers reign with Christ as king and queens? Can you guys help me here? I'm getting tired of dealing with this because I'm the one who's going to get the bad rap. I'm the one who's going to say, Sam, you're mean. You insult people. You call them dog, fam, because they don't listen. Delkith. It was Matthew 519, Matthew 1111, Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1115. But then the other passages had to do with Mary, the mother of our Lord, right? Luke 139, Luke 145, and there in Luke 1, 
41 to 44, John in his mother's womb, six months old, leapt at the sound of Mary. Elizabeth, filled the Holy Spirit, says, this is the mother of my Lord, giving in the honor, coming to my house. So if you read from Luke 1, 39 to 52, Mary says, all generations will call me blessed, and so on and so forth. So, J. J. Michelle, do you want to leave my channel? Because you're a distraction and a nuisance. You really are. Because I keep saying that Catholics and Orthodox believe all believers in Christ reign with Christ. Yes, they believe Mary is the greatest creature, the highest creature, and the highest ranking. But to say that is not to be unbiblical in that the Bible does say among the redeemed creatures of Christ, some will be higher than, in rank than others. That's it. Luke 1, 46 to 52, Max. Let's post it for you. Luke 1, 46, 52, guys. Post it. Sorry, I hope I'm not distracting the rest of you. I hope I'm not. I hope this is not the second, because I'm getting tired of correcting error, man. Honestly, I am. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. No, 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 no. Uh, shut up. No. Sam, you don't know what you're talking about, Sam. Shut your mouth, Sam. Don't you see what Jesus said to my mother and brothers? See? He demoted Mary. Stupid Sam. You don't know how to read your Bible. I said to 52, it's okay. You can give me all made of 56. It's up to you. Right? You stupid, Sam. That's the problem. You're a Protestant. Private interpretation, Sam. Private interpretation. Okay? No, 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 no. It doesn't mean what it says. They won't call her blessed. Because over here it says she's just an ordinary woman, Sam. Okay. Private interpretation, Sam. You're just a Protestant. You have no authority. You're your own Pope, Sam. Okay? Papa Sam. Papa Sammy. <laughs> I got mental issues, dude. No, not you, Max. I'm not talking about you, Max. I was talking about Johnny Hurry. See, he just said she's just an ordinary woman, Sam. Papa Sam. Abuna Sam. Hi, Abuna. Private interpretation, sucker. All right, anyway. Okay. What was the point of Ephesians 5? We're not going to quote it. Ephesians 5, 22 to 33. The church is the bride of Christ. If it's the bride of Christ, he's the king, then the church is the queen. Is Mary part of the church? Yes, right there. Just biblically. Biblically, you have to argue she's a queen. Oh this guy hey johnny can you get the hell out of here dude you wicked raby dog trying to rob mary of of the blessing of that jesus gave her look at what a filthy dog he is many people are blessed get this dog out of here man protestant which part of don't quote ephesians 5 22 to 33 wasn't clear hey uh i'm live streaming it's okay you can just call me and i'll just pick up the phone while i'm live streaming yes can i help you I'm all right. I was talking to my brother. Hey, brother, I'm right. Live stream. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm sorry. So I have a weird question. Yes. I'm not excusing you. It's just a question. Um, do you use the pot? Not in here. Maybe next door. Maybe sometimes. Okay. So we have a no marijuana policy. Even if you have a medical marijuana card, yes. we don't allow marijuana on the oh, property. You got it. Sure. Okay. Thank you. All righty then. Sorry about that. Satan attacks, Sam. So you just ask me, uh, do you do you smell pot or she you smoke pot? Anyway, see? I said not here. Maybe next door. All right. Okay, guys. Are we ready? A lot of distractions today. Okay. Uh, uh, did we get those points so far? Yeah, because I live in an apartment complex. I go, do you smell pot? I thought she said, do you uh, Smell pot, but I think she meant, do you smoke pot? And I thought smell pot. I said, not here, maybe next door. Next door, I don't know. Anyway, 
Are we ready now? Do you smell pot, Sammy? Okay. Are we ready, folks? Or are you guys tired? If you're tired, we'll just shut it down because we got too many distractions. It, it doesn't fail. I can't go through a topic without uh, uh, agents of the devil distracting. You want me to continue? Kana bosom. Kana bosom? I don't know what the heck kana bosom means. You sure you want me to finish? You guys all right? Are you up for it? Because I feel like, you, you know, I torture you guys with all these distractions. Okay. All right. So we got that part for, right? The church is the bride of Christ. Christ is the king. The church will be the queen. At the very least, Mary being the part, part of the church, she too is a queen. You understand what I'm trying to show you? There's nothing unbiblical in saying she's the queen of heaven. You understand what I'm getting at? So to quote Jeremiah 7 and 44 is misplaced because that's a different context. So I'm trying to show you there's nothing unbiblical with her being the queen of heaven if it's properly understood. Now you may say there's nothing explicit that says she's the greatest of all creatures. Yes, there's nothing explicit. Okay, that's, that's a given. But to say that she can't be the queen of heaven, why not? Believers are reigning with Christ. They share in his reign. She's a believer united to Christ, the mother of Christ who gave him his humanity, and she's redeemed. You see that in Acts 114, she's waiting for the spirit to be poured out on the church, and she's there, part of the church, right? Okay, so then whether you like it or not, she too is reigning with Christ. And no informed Orthodox, and they're here. They can correct me if I'm lying. They can correct me if I'm lying. No informed Orthodox, Roman Catholic, Assyrian Church of the East thinks Mary alone reigns. They believe all believers reign as king and queens, but that Mary is the highest ranking in the member of the body of Christ because she's the greatest of all creatures. That's it. And that there are ranks in heaven, that is biblical. I mentioned it yesterday in this session and I gave you the verses. Jesus said, some will be great in the kingdom, some will be least in the kingdom. So when you see it from that angle, all you can say is this. Okay, I can see a biblical basis for it. She is reigning as queen. Obviously, she's going to be a high-ranking member in the body of Christ, not one of the lower-ranking members, especially it's his mother. But I still don't believe she's the greatest of all creatures. Okay, that's between you and God. You understand what I'm getting at? That's between you and God. In my heart, this is my heart, I don't have something explicit. Being the mother of Christ, in my view, she's the greatest woman and the greatest of all creatures. That's what I believe because she's the mother of my Lord. A special connection with Christ. Not only is she redeemed and part of the spiritual body of Christ, she carried God in her belly for nine months. And that is an honor that won't be given to any other human being. And you don't just, you know, brush that aside like the other guy did. And many people are blessed. I mean, how do you answer someone that's stupid? Many people have been blessed. Yes, yes, yes. Because Ephesians 1.6 says we are blessed. And therefore, she's no different and no better. Dude, she was given the honor of carrying God in her belly for nine months. God taking on a physical body, human nature, from her blessed, sanctified womb by the Spirit. Oh, but no, I see that. Okay. Louisa, why are you? Pins and needles, needles and pins. It is a happy man that grins. What am I mad about? Let's now jump into the assumption of Mary. We were sailing along on a moonlight bay. Here, here. Logo. Al Masihu Akbar, Al Masihu Akbar. Okay. Louisa said, I just go into the assumption of Mary Louisa and forget about the uh, subject. It's up to you, Louisa. I mean, it's up to you, sister. Okay. Let me just do some stuff here. All right. Let's talk about the Queen Mother. First Kings 2 19 and 20. It's okay, Luisa. You got to be patient. 
You're in a buffet and you want to stuff yourself so you can throw up. No, be patient. First Kings 2, 19 and 20. Bathsheba therefore went to King Solomon to speak to him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed down to her and sat down on his throne and had a throne set for the king's mother. So she sat at his right hand. Oh, wow. Then she said, I desire one small petition of you. Do not refuse me. And the king said to her, ask it, my mother, for I will not refuse you. Solomon sees his mother, asks for a throne to be brought out so his mother can sit on the throne on his right hand, and he bows to her in honor of her being his queen mother. Solomon, who's a sinner, who's imperfect, honors his mother, but Jesus, who's the perfect son, the perfect God-man, should we expect anything less from him? Did you see it? Now, unlike Mary, the mother of our Lord, these queen mothers, these queen mothers, not all of them are righteous. Some of them are wicked, and God deposed of them. But what am I showing you? The concept of a queen mother. Exactly LBW. So if Solomon, who's a wicked sinner, could honor his mother, by giving her a throne to sit on and to sit on his right. Do you think the Lord Jesus, who's the perfect God man, will show his mother any less honor when he's the king of kings and lord of lords? The perfect human son and he's the perfect God man? <whistles> now, let me show you this concept of queen mother in the Old Testament. Now, don't forget the point. These queen mothers, some of them were wicked and evil. So I'm not paralleling them to the mother of our Lord. No, what I'm saying is there is a queen mother in the Old Testament. So now let me ask you a question, Luis, and everyone else. Jesus is the heir of the Davidic throne. And he became a son of David from his blessed mother. His blessed mother made him a human descendant of David because he had no human father. If the Davidic kings would honor their mothers as queen mothers... How much more the greater David, the greater Sol Solomon? What a stupid, dumb guy. I'm going to call you a stupid, dumb bastard. Because in that, in that context, when she says she's blessed among women, why did Elizabeth say that? She's blessed among women because she's the mother of Elizabeth's Lord. So you're saying among women, not above them. So there's another woman who can be her equal in being the mother of your Lord. You see what a dumb, stupid bastard you are, valiant crusader? That you want to rob Jesus' mother of the honor and dignity that God has given her because you are a bastard, a spiritual bastard of the devil? Even what you just quoted came from Elizabeth. You quoted Luke 142, but you forgot Luke 143? Why is she blessed among women? Because she's the mother of my Lord. Now send valiant crusader valiantly back to hell and from the filth that he came from. See, it's sad to see the the willingness to want to demote Mary and not give her her honor and due from Scripture. Notice, guys, I've been scriptural here, right? Because I know I'm going to get Protestants upset at me and attacking me. Have you seen me ap ap uh, appeal to the church fathers? No, right? I have been sticking with Scripture, making inferences from uh, Scripture, Someone going to question my exegesis? More power to you. You don't agree with me? Fine. You can disagree with me. Don't waste my time. Right? You with me there? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying in front of you, Sharbo. I don't say in front of you. You guys know I'm not a Catholic or Orthodox. I'm still Protestant that I affirm sola scriptura, sola fide. If I'm wrong, God will show me. But I'm saying this before the Lord. I love the mother of my Lord. I love Mary, my mother, more than my own mother. I adore her. And I'm not saying it because of you guys. Okay? 
I'm saying because that's what I feel. I love her and I get upset and I get angry when someone either blasphemes my God or denigrates the honor of my mother. Honestly, I'm getting upset. Right? I get upset. You want to make her... I'm not saying she's not a human creature. She is. A human creature sanctified by, by the Spirit to be the mother of Christ and giving him his humanity. I mean, come on, man. I, I don't need to repeat this. But anyway, let's focus. Okay, 2 Kings 24, verses 12 to 15. 2 Kings 24, verses 12 to 15. Ligger, you need to get out of here too. Hey, Riaz, be quick with these demons. Be quick. 2 Kings 24, 12 to 15. Then Joachim, king of Judah, his mother, pay attention, his mother, Joachim, king of Judah, his mother. You're going to see why this is important. Joachim's mother, his servants, his princes, his officers went out to the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon in the eighth year of his reign took him prisoner. Right? And he carried out from there. All the treasures, sorry. That's what happens to many texting, I lose my place. Of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house, and he cut in pieces all the articles of gold, which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord Jehovah. And the Lord Jehovah had said, mm -hmm. also he carried into captivity all Jerusalem, pay attention, Joachim, all the captains, all the mighty men of valor, 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen and smiths, right? None remained except poorest people of the land. Now pay attention, 15. And he carried Joachim captive to Babylon. The king's mother, the king's wives. Pay attention here. King's mother, king's wives. His officers and the mighty of the land he carried into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. <clears throat> Go to Jeremiah 13, 18 to 20. Jeremiah 13, 18 to 20. Joachim, his mother and his wives. Yeah. Jeremiah 13, 18 to 20. Okay, pay attention here. Say to the king and to the queen mother. <whistles> say This is about Joachim. Say to the king and the queen mother. <whistles> humble yourself, sit down, for your rule shall collapse the crown of your glory. Whose crown of glory? Your mother's crown and your crown. Because she's your queen mother. I'm deposing both of you. The cities of the south shall be shut up, and no one shall open them. Judah shall be carried away, captive all of it. It shall be wholly carried away, captive. Lift up your eyes and see. Those who come, and that's Babylon, by the way, right? <clears throat> Those who come from the north, where is the flock that was given to your beautiful sheep? Did you catch it? King, queen, mother, your crown of glory will be made nothing. You'll be humbled. Notice the king's mother is the queen. The king's mother is the queen. Now, she happened to be an evil queen, and he happened to be an evil king. But you see the point? King's mother was the queen. 2 Kings 15, verses 11 to 13. 2 Kings 15, verses 11 to 13. I hope this doesn't come up for me again. I hope I don't have to address this again. I don't want to address this again, honestly. 2 Kings... 15 verses 11 to 13. Okay. Thank you. Happy go lucky. Before the rapture, brother. Now, the rest of the Acts Zechariah, indeed. I'm sorry. First Kings. 15, 11. See, I'm saying computer shutdown. 1 Kings 11. 1 Kings 15, 11 to 13. I'm sorry, brother. You see, I'm fried. 1 Kings 15, verses 11 to 13. Why'd you give me the 15, you little sinner? You little wicked sinner. Even though I was wrong about it, it's 1 Kings 15, 11 to 13. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did his father David. And he banished and perverted, banished the perverted persons from the land and removed all the idols that his father had made. Also, he removed Macha, his grandmother, from being queen mother. <whistles> There's the queen mother again. <whistles> 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 
queen mother again because she had made an obscene image of Asherah and Asa cut down her obscene image and burned it by the book Brook Kidron. Okay, guys, three examples where there's a queen mother. Two of whom are evil and wicked and God deposes of them. But what did you find? The concept of queen mother. Queen mother, Louisa. Jesus is the son of David. He's the greater David, the greater Solomon. And he's made a human descendant of David because of his blessed mother. He has no father. So his mother even gives him his human ancestry lineage to David. If Solomon, who is a sinner, can honor his mother Bathsheba. And by the way, Bathsheba was an adulteress. That's the woman that committed adultery with David, got pregnant, and David murdered her husband to cover up their shame. If such a wicked, evil woman, whom God showed mercy, can be honored as queen mother, that Solomon could put a throne at his right for her to sit on and bow to her out of respect and love. Do you expect Jesus, the perfect God-man, who loves his mother perfectly, to treat her any less? See the point? People got tired. We went to 160. So like, man, we're tired of this guy. I don't blame, blame you. I'm tired of, you know, tired of myself as well. Right? Especially when you take into consideration that being a member of the body of Christ, you share in the reign of Christ. You share in the rule of Christ. So automatically, even if Mary wasn't the mother of Christ, if she's a believer, she would be reigning with Christ as queen. How much more so when she's his blessed mother whom he loves and adores. You with me there? Let it sink in before I move on. Yeah, I do. No, but I'm going to get attacked. I'm going to get attacked by various Protestants who think that I'm getting Catholic or Orthodox and that I'm perverting the faith and I'm twisting the scripture. And I really don't care. They can go and attack me. Just don't bring it to my attention. Don't tell me. That I don't want to hear it. I don't really care. I don't want to hear it. There's too many battles I don't want to engage in. All right. Everyone got it so far before I move on to the final point? Because they'll say that I'm reading too much into the scriptures, Max. That I'm reading too much in the scriptures in order to make it fit a doctrine. And guys, I just said, I didn't embrace this view because of tradition. I, I was confronted with the arguments. And I started reflecting on the arguments, meditating on the arguments. And see where the arguments are weak and where they're strong and where they could be made stronger and sharper still. Until I argue myself into believing something or rejecting something. That's how I work. That's how my brain works. Okay. That's how my brain works. How does my brain work? You give me stuff. I got to just ruminate on the information. So I got to think about it, meditate on it. It may take me a week. It may take, it may, it may take me years. And I'll be thinking and reflecting and meditating. Yeah, this was weak. But you know what? This argument's good, but it can be stronger. Until finally... By the grace of God's spirit, I believe and I hope, now sinks in. All right, I got it. That's it. I got it. That's why I say people can't argue me into a position. You can't argue your position and convince me. I need to hear it for myself, meditate on it, ruminate on it, pray over it, speak to the Holy Spirit, and until finally I say no or yes. You want me there? Hey, let's see what's happening. You get you get my point? I got one final argument to make. One final argument to make, and I'm done. Sharbal, being in this position can be a very lonely position. You know why? Unless you're convinced that something is true, you can't just simply go along with it. And because I'm all over the map, I don't think there's any one church that could fully embrace me. You know what I'm saying? Because there'll be things I don't see and I don't accept, and they're going to say, well, then you can't be in communion. Right? So you uh, you end up pretty much being all alone. I'm not trying to play a martyr or feel sorry for me or woe is me. 
Oh, here goes this dog again. Hey, dude, why do you keep coming back to my channel? Why don't you go lick that black stone like the good pagan you are? Why are you here, ABC? I'm going to make you X, Y, and Z. Can you get him out of here, Riaz? You're too slow, bro. Okay, now, final line of argument. Are you ready? This is the final one. This one's the big bang. This one's like, bam! But it's going to require me to do some in-depth exegesis. Are you ready for the final one? Thank you, Juan. God bless you. Thank you. Folks, after today, can you promise me, after I finish this session, don't ask me about these issues anymore because I now have it archived on YouTube. I want to go back to other issues like uh, addressing the anti-Trinitarians. So are you ready for the, the, for the big one, the one that goes, bam, bam, sucker? Okay, I need to get something to drink, though. Okay, wait. Let me just get something to drink because it's live, and I'll sing you a song. It's now or never. Come hold me tight. Whisper, my darling. Be my tonight. Be my. Be my. It's now or never. My love away. It's now or never. Come on. Ma! I gotta practice on that one. Ma! Ma! No, no, not yet. Ooh, <clears throat> Hold on. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> figaro, figaro, figaro. Ma! Oh, hey, ah! Figaro, 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 figaro. Figaro, ho! Figaro, 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 Figaro. All right. Are we ready for the final one? And you guys know where I'm going with this. Revelation 12, an inspired exposition of the woman and the serpent. Revelation 12, an inspired exposition of the woman and the serpent. You ready? And this is Coke Zero. I know you want me to get rid of the zero and go with the hero in time. You ready now? First, let's go to Genesis 3. Let's read 14 to 16. See, Protestant already assumed that he, he I was going to go to Revelation 12 first. What happens when you assume Protestant? Let's go to Genesis 3, 14 to 16. Figaro, 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 figaro. This guy again. Don't be a hater, Al. You're not my pal. Okay. Genesis 3, 14 to 16. Pay attention now. Genesis 3, 14 to 16. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. <clears throat> On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman. Between you and the woman. I'm going to put hatred between you, the serpent, and the woman. Okay. And between your seed and her seed. Your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now pay attention. The woman. The woman. Okay. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. In pain, you shall bring forth Children, your sorrow and conception, so she'll be in labor pains. Pay attention to the language. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. So it's not about Eve here. Now, folks, it's talking about Eve. Eve is the woman. The serpent is going to be at war with Eve, the woman, and her seed. Okay? And this woman, Eve, is going to bear children in labor pains, with labor pains, right? You got that so far? You got that so far? Woman, serpent, seed, his seed, her seed, and she gives birth and labor pains. Okay. Now, Genesis 37, 9 to 11. Genesis 37, 9 to 11. Genesis 37, 9 to 11. Okay. Joseph has a dream, the son of Jacob. Joseph has a dream. 
Then he dreamed, Joseph dreamed, still another dream, and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the woman, and the 11 stars bow down to me. I, Joseph, had a dream. Sun and woman, 11 stars bow down to me. Sun and woman, 11 stars bow down to me. Guys, you got to remember this or you're not going to make the connection. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? Right? Thank you, magic. Okay, now. <clears throat> Notice what he says in 11. And his brothers envied him, but his father kept this matter in mind. Thank you. Now, catch it again, folks. I, Joseph, had a dream where I saw sun and moon, 11 stars bowing to me. The sun is Jacob, my father. The moon is his wife, my mother. And the 11 stars are my brothers. All of you are going to bow to me. Did you catch the interpretation? Thank you, Magic Man. Did you catch the interpretation? The sun and the moon, 11 stars, represents Jacob, his wife, and his 11 sons. If we add Joseph as a star, how many stars would that be? If we add Joseph as a star, how many stars would that be? Twelve, right? Sun and moon, 12 stars. Woman gives birth with labor pains to children. The seed of the serpent and her seed will be at war, and the serpent will attack her. Now, Jeremiah 4, verse 31. Jeremiah 4, verse 31. Watch what's going to happen. For I have heard a voice of a woman in labor. Pay attention. A woman in labor. The anguish as of her who brings forth her first child. The voice of the daughter of Zion bewailing. So the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem bewailing as a woman in labor pains. Right? Bewailing stuff. She spreads her hand saying, Woe is me now, for my soul is weary because of murderers. So Jerusalem's likened to a pregnant woman giving birth in labor pains, right? To a woman. So Jerusalem is likened to a woman. Jacob, his wife, and his 12 sons, sun and moon, and 12 stars, right? You with me there? Jacob, his wife, 12 sons, sun and moon, 12 stars. Israel, Jerusalem, the descendants of Jacob and his, from his sons, a woman giving birth and labor pains. Okay, now, if you're ready, if you're ready, if you're ready, Revelation 12, verses 1 to 2. Let's see if you're ready. That, was my, that scared my eyes. My eyes rolled back. I was like, uh. Revelation 12, verses 1 to 2. Watch here. Let's see if you catch it, the imagery. Now a great sign, a great sign appeared in heaven. Pay attention to the word sign, appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. A woman with the sun and moon under her feet, and a crown, garland of 12 stars, a crown in heaven. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. Okay. Hmm. Woman with a crown of 12 stars, sun and moon under her feet, gives birth to a male child in labor pains. But it gets better. Hold on, guys. Verses 3 to 5. <whistles> Verses 3 to 5. Verses 3 to 5. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, who's her child? Notice who her child is. Verse 5. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was come, caught up to God and his throne. Jesus. The woman gives birth to the male child, Jesus, who then is taken to heaven to rule with God on God's throne. But who's the dragon? Revelation 12, verse 9. You're going to see where I'm going with this in a minute.
Revelation 12, verse 9. No, no, it's better than that, chronically Catholic. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old. There's the story of Genesis. The serpent trying to devour the seed of the woman. But God saves the seed of the woman, the male child, by taking him to heaven. Revelation 12 is an inspired commentary on Genesis 3. This guy keeps focusing on Herod. Stuck for Allah, Rabbil Alameen. A'udhu Billah min Shaitan Rajeem. Chronically Catholic, are you chronically ill? Why are you limiting it to Herod? When Jesus was taken to heaven after his death and resurrection, it's referring to the entire ministry and life of Christ that Satan tried to devour him and failed. But for some reason, you just keep focusing on Herod because you think it's a literal little child. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. Okay. We're not talking about Mary as a new Eve right now. Just focus with me. Okay. Focus with me. You understand what Revelation 12 did? He took the imagery of the woman. Now, in Revelation 12, 1 verse 2, the woman has sun and moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars. And Israel is described as a woman who gives birth in labor pains. Are you seeing what John is telling you here? He's taking Genesis 3, Genesis 37, 9 to 11, and other imagery in the Old Testament like Jeremiah 4, 31 to show you that Eve is a picture of the nation. What nation? Israel. Eve the woman... That one person becomes a picture of a nation. But that nation also is a picture of one woman. You understand what I'm going with this, right? Revelation 12 is saying that the woman is Israel. And Jesus was born out of Israel. And the serpent has been trying to destroy Israel. But keeps failing. And now tried to devour her child and failed. And then later on, if you read Revelation 12, 13 and 17... It says, then the dragon pursued the children of the woman, those who believe in Christ. Verse 17, Revelation 12, 17. But I'm going to tie it in with Mary in a minute. Okay, watch here. Revelation 12, 17. Exactly, Ariel. You see where I'm going with this? Eve, Israel, Mary. You got it, bro. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Who are the rest of her offspring? Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Here's the seed of the woman. Israel, the nation, from whom comes Messiah. And those who believe in Jesus become her children because we're spiritual Israelites. Revelation 12 is an inspired commentary on Genesis 3, Genesis 37, as well as passages in Isaiah and Jeremiah 4.31. So you understand what you just learned in Revelation 12? The woman is the nation. Remember, Jacob is the sun, his wife is the moon, and his 12 sons are 12 stars. And they make up the nation Israel. So when you see a woman with the sun and moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars... That's the imagery showing you here's the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel. And the dragon is the serpent who wants to devour her, especially now that she's giving birth to the male child who's taken to heaven. That's Jesus. But now watch how this works. Are you ready? Watch how this works. Are you ready now? Just like Eve, a woman became a picture of a nation, Israel, that nation is a picture of a woman who truly is the mother of the child and gave birth to the child, Mary. Now let me connect it with Mary. Are you ready now for me to connect it with Mary? No, brother. Allahu Akbar. I'm about to, man, that's it. I'm going to, that's it. Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm going to throw myself off the balcony. <clears throat> Okay. Let me now show you that the woman Israel becomes a picture of Christ. Are you ready now? Yeah, we went from 210 to 157. See, people get tired of me, Anna. And I get tired of them. I love to hate them. Okay, let's logos. All right. 
Let me show you how the woman Israel becomes a picture of Mary because she too is an Israelite, right? Are you ready now? Are we ready without you trying to give me exegesis of, oh, so Mary went in the wilderness? No, she never went in the wilderness for a thousand. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Okay, let's go. Revelation 12, 1. Revelation 12, 1. Now a great sign, pay attention, sign, great sign appeared in heaven, heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and her head, a garland of 12 stars. And what does this woman do? In verse 12, early 5, she gives birth to a male child, right? She gives birth to a male child who is taken to heaven to rule on God's throne, right? Okay. Isaiah 7, 10 to 14. A great sign in heaven, a woman. Hey, watch here. One. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. The height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then he said, Here now, O house of David. House of David. Jesus is from the house of David. Mary's from the house of David. Is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will you weary my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Sign, a great sign in heaven. What was the sign? Behold the virgin. And the Hebrew word Alma can also mean young maiden, young woman. Shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Shall ask a sign. A sign in the heavens above or in Sheol beneath. A sign I will give you. A woman who's a virgin gives birth to a male child. That's Revelation 12 verses 1 to 5, folks. A sign in heaven. A woman is in heaven and gives birth to a child who's the Messiah to rule on God's throne. Let's look at another connection. John 2, verse 4. John 2, verse 4. And we're going to wrap up and I'm done. Surprise, David, then I'm done. Exactly, Pedro. If you just listen, it'll sink in. Jesus said to her, Woman, a great sign in heaven, a woman. Gives birth to a male child. Hmm. What does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And yet because of her intercession, he does a miracle. And I'll talk about that in a future session. Oh, but it gets a little better. John 19, 25 to 27. 19, 25, 27. Folks, I want to see over 300 next week. Don't disappoint me. We're going over 200, but then we're going down. Yeah, John 19, 25, 27. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. And the dragon made war with the children of the woman, those who hold to the commandments of Christ. John, behold your mother, behold your son. The offspring of the woman who hold to the testimony of Christ. What's the point? Whether you believe Revelation 12 is talking about the Assumption of Mary or not, this is what's clear. If this woman is crowned as queen in heaven, and this woman points to the nation, which then points to Mary... Why would you have a problem with Mary being the queen of heaven? Because that's what you found in the imagery. You get it now? Cherubel, honestly, I don't want you to think I'm boasting. By the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I give him glory because I believe it's from him. He's blessed me with the ability 
to recall passages and connect them. And that's a gift he gave me early on, and I realize it. Because, like, if you ask me a question, Charbel, honestly, you ask me a question, verses pop in my mind, and I start making connections in my mind as I'm talking to you. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He gets all the glory. Okay, Christos, don't be honest. Lie to me. Lie to me and say click to you. What didn't click? Help me to help you, Christos, because you know you got mental issues. It's okay, brother. We'll be we'll work with you. What didn't click? If Eve can represent Israel, then Israel can represent Mary. You understand, Christos? In Genesis 3, the woman is Eve, and the serpent will make oh John 19. Well, the point is. Jesus says to John, behold her, your mother. And then she says to Mary, this is your son. So John is a believer. And because he believes in Jesus, Jesus makes him a son of Mary and entrusts Mary to his care. So here's the concept and principle. Mary, the mother of Christ, becomes the mother of John, who's a follower of Christ, which means that a follower of Christ can look to Mary as his mother. You get it? Well, John, yeah, I mean, when you say a woman, because, yeah, because, anyway, I just want to see. So you with me there? Christos and Esti? Yeah, Christos. John wasn't Mary's biological son, right? But did you hear what he said? He said to Mary, behold your son, and he said to John, behold your mother. What's the connection? John believes in Jesus, and he keeps Jesus' commands. So then he says to Mary, he is your son. Look to him as your son. And then he says to John, she's your mother. Care for her. So what you can extrapolate from that is if you, like John, love Jesus and obey him, you too can embrace Mary as your mother, and she'll embrace you as her son. You got it now, Christos and Esti? Predit? I don't know what predit means, man. I have no idea. What's predit? Pins and needles. Needles and pins. A happy man is a man. Christos, which part of Revelation 12, 17 wasn't clear? Pins and needles. Needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. Did you forget Revelation 12, 17, Christos, or no? Pins and needles. Needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. Let's look at Revelation 12, 17 one more time, brother. What am I mad about? Okay, one more time, brother. I know it's it's hard. It's late for you. It's late for me, and I'm shut down. I'm actually tired. I'm fried. Okay, Christos, pretend you're reading the passage and not playing games. So read with me, Christos. You know I love you, but not too much. Okay. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Did you miss that verse, Christos? The woman has offspring, and who are they? Those who keep the command of Christ. And I said that woman typifies Mary. Eve, the woman, becomes a picture of Israel, the woman, and Israel, the woman, is a picture of Christ, the woman. So if the woman has offspring, and those offspring are those who keep the commands of Christ, and that woman is a picture of Christ, what's the conclusion, Christos? Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. Pins and needles, needles and pins. What's the conclusion? What's the conclusion? Just as before the rapture, dude, I'm about to be left behind because I'm tired. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. Logos. Okay. Christos, you're asking like you're scared. Spiritual children. Okay. I'm going to do it again because I want you to make the connection. The woman in Revelation 12, her offspring are Christians who keep the commands of Christ. The woman is a type of Mary, like Eve is a type of Israel. Eve, the woman, is a type of Israel, the woman. And Israel, the woman, is a type of Mary, the woman. So if the woman 
is the mother of believers in Christ, and she's a type of Mary. Then is Mary the mother of believers? If that woman points to her, typifies her? I don't know. What to Thank you, Jesus is our pastor. I need to lose more. Okay. Are you with me there? Christos? Please, Christos, don't make it longer than it is, brother. Please. Yes, not only because she carried God, you're still not getting it. We were sailing along on a moonlight bay. Okay, Christos, were you, I'll be honest with me. Were you listening to my exegesis Revelation 12 or are you pretending to? I just want to I want you to be honest, bro. Okay. Were you listening to Revelation 12? I just want you to see. Okay. Sorry, guys. I just want to make sure he's getting it. Okay, now follow with me, Christos. No one's saying the woman isn't Israel. It is Israel. But did you hear what I said? Just like Eve is the original woman that the serpent is to make war with, and the serpent makes war with the seed of the woman in Genesis, who's Eve. Then Eve typifies, points to Israel. You understand how it's working here? In Genesis 3, the woman is Eve, a person. By the time you read the rest of the Bible, that woman then points to someone else, the nation, Israel, as the woman. Just like Eve can be a picture of Israel as the woman, Israel is also a picture of Mary as the woman. So it's not either or. It's all assumed in one. It is Israel. But still Israel it typifies Mary because Mary is also truly the woman who gave birth to the male child. And she is the woman. And Satan did try to devour the child when she was pregnant with him and then gave birth to him using Herod as an instrument and throughout his entire earthly ministry. So I didn't say it's not Israel. I said just like Eve is the woman. But she points to Israel as the woman. And the woman Israel points to Mary as the woman. Yeah, that either or. Let me show you why you shouldn't see it either or. Okay? Can I show you why you shouldn't see it as either or? Revelation 12, 4 to 5. Yeah. Revelation 12, verses 4 to 5. I know that's Brad Pitry. He makes that argument. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Joe. But I'm going to I'm gonna show you why it's an either or. Okay, follow with me. Uh, Christos, are you ready now, Christos? I want you to get this because you're going to see now something amazing about the Bible interpretation. Revelation 12, 4 to 5, notice verse 5. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now pay attention, verse 5. Everyone pay attention. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. A rod of iron. This is Psalm 2. Verses 7 to 9. Psalm 2, verses 7 to 9. Watch this. The child who's taken to God's throne rules the nations with a rod of iron. Watch here. I will declare the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your position. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. So now Christos, everyone else, do you see Revelation 12, 5 is referring to Psalm 2 being fulfilled in Jesus. Jesus is the son of God who rules the nations with a rod of iron, right? Do you see that, Christos? But wait, you're going to get a, a problem here. Pay attention to just what you just read, because now go to Revelation 2, 26 to 27. Revelation 2, 26 to 27. Watch. 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 Watch what's going to happen here. And he, Jesus speaking, Christos, to believers, he overcomes and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over all the nations. He shall rule them. With a rod of iron, 
they shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels. Why is Jesus now taking Psalm 2, verses 8 to 9, and applying it to believers? He says, you, when you overcome, you will fulfill Psalm 2, 8 to 9. I thought it's about Jesus. I thought it's about Jesus. First last, are you there? Yeah, because we're almost done. Christos, what happened here? Is Psalm 2 about Jesus or is it about believers? You got it, Joel. It's because we are the body of Christ, one with Christ. These promises also extend to us. Okay, let me give you another example. Are you ready? Are you ready for another example? Is first the last here? Because we're almost done. Because I need now Isaiah 42, 6 to 7. Okay, Isaiah 42, verses 6 to 7. Exactly, Christos. Isaiah 42, 6 to 7. Watch here. Exactly. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles. I will make you, this is about Jesus the Messiah, I will make you a light to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison's house. Okay, that's what I'm going to do with you, Jesus, right? You're going to be a light to the Gentiles, open blind eyes. Okay, Isaiah 49, 6. So this is about Jesus the servant. Isaiah 49, 6. Watch where we're going with this. We're almost done. Right now after this, we'll be done. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. So this is not about Jesus, a servant. You will be a light to the Gentiles and bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. But now Christos, notice how Paul quotes this passage. Acts 13, 46 to 47, specifically verse 47. Pay attention to 47, but Acts 13, 46 to 47. Watch here. And we're done. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you rejected and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Why is Paul quoting Isaiah 49.6 in reference to himself? That he and Barnabas are fulfilling Isaiah 49, 6 when it's about the Messiah, Jesus. Why? Why is Paul taking a passage of Messiah bringing salvation to the ends of the earth and applying it to himself and Barnabas and their witness to the Jews and the Gentiles and bringing the message of salvation? Why is that, Christos? Thank you. And by the way, you just made the Orthodox Catholic argument. It says that Paul and Barnabas will be God's salvation to the ends of the earth. They share in the work of Christ's salvation and bringing salvation to people. So then what would be the problem in saying that about Mary? So Paul and Barnabas just described themselves as co-redeemers? So how unbiblical is it to say co-redemptrix? Hmm. Hmm. Coming back to the issue. Coming back to the issue, Christos Anesti. The woman in Revelation 12 is the nation, but it also points to Mary. It's not either or, right? You see what you just learned?
I didn't say it's not about Israel. I said it's Israel, but like Israel, <clears throat> the nation was typified in Eve. Eve being a woman pointing to the nation. The nation typifies Mary because what's true of her is true of Mary because she truly did give birth to the Messiah. So now here's my question, Christos Luisa. If the nation, the woman, is described as queen in heaven because she's in heaven with a crown and that nation points to Mary, why would you have a problem with Mary being crowned queen of heaven? What's the problem now? So note, I didn't say it's about the assumption of Mary. I know people believe that. You got to hear their arguments. What I'm saying, this is what I'm saying. If the woman in Revelation 12 is truly the queen in heaven, because she's a queen, she's got a crown, 12 stars, she's in heaven. And that woman typifies Mary, right? Then why would you have a problem with Mary being queen in heaven, queen of heaven? Yeah, exactly. That's okay. But Luisa, did Paul say that he is God's salvation to the ends of the earth? Acts 13, 47. I'm not trying to convince you. Just pray about it. Come to your own conclusion. Luisa, we just read Paul saying Isaiah 49, 7. Okay, but wait. How can he be God's salvation to the ends of the earth? Only Christ is the Savior. So Paul just made himself a co-savior, huh? Because if you're one with Christ in the Spirit, Luisa, and you are united to Christ by the Spirit, then Christ works in and through you. In and through you. You are his instruments and his hands and feet. So for someone to say Mary is co-redemptrix, -redem right? They're not saying anything more, anything less than what the Bible says when Paul says, I am God's salvation to the ends of the earth. Not I. Jesus saves, but he works through us to bring about his salvation. That's what the Orthodox and the Catholic are saying, believe it or not. The Orthodox and the Catholic and the Church of the East are saying Christ brings about salvation through his spiritual body, one of whom is Mary. Don't believe me? Ask them. Here, they're right here in front of you. They're, ask them. Are you saying she's a savior independent from Christ? Are you saying she's a savior equal to Christ? Are you saying that Christ brings about salvation through his spiritual body, one of whom, a chief member, is his mother? Here, I want the Orthodox and the Catholic to say it. Here, they're here. And the Church of the East, Gilgamesh. Do any of you believe that Mary is a separate savior from Christ or she's a savior equal to Christ? Here, they're right here. Don't take my word for it. Do any of you believe she's a separate savior from Christ or equal to Christ? Okay, read it, Luisa. Here. No, that would be blasphemy. Blasphemy. No, Sam. Absolutely not. No. No. Blasphemous. Not separate. Not equal. What else do you guys want, man? I don't know. And by the way, I'm not Catholic. I'm not Orthodox. I'm not Church of the East. But I want to be fair and honest. Hell no. You see that? Don't you think it's it's time we don't define what others believe for themselves, but we hear what they believe from their best representatives? Hear what they got to say. Hear from the best representatives of these traditions. Hear them clearly and honestly and say, okay, I don't agree. No, good point. I do that with Muslims. I listen to the best they have to offer. And by the power of the trine God, I demolish it because Islam is a lie. Why would I do that with Trinitarians? Why would I let a Catholic who's a Trinitarian who worships the Trinity make his case for himself and listen to their best representatives and hear them honestly? Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, all right. Wow. Right? Anyway, Luisa, I hope it blessed you. I did this out of love for my brother, sister, Christ, and I did it especially for you because you were stumbling. And Luisa, let me repeat again. Please do not believe anything out of pressure. <clears throat> do not believe something just because I said it. 
seek the face of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, uh, Luisa, let me just end it with this. Okay, let me just end it with this. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is our God. He is our Lord. He's our creator, sustainer, maker, provider, redeemer, <clears throat> life giver, teacher, instructor, savior. He's the one sent to guide us into all truth. He's the one sent to discipline and train us up to become spiritually mature warriors. He's the one sent to correct and discipline us. He's the one sent to preserve us from ever being severed from Christ, from being deceived of Satan, and from <clears throat> being cut off and damned to the pit of hell. That's who the Holy Spirit is in our life. He's the deposit of our faith sent by the Father and the Son. So, Louisa, this is what I want you to do. Something I want you to do. I want everyone to do this. Get on your knees and in your face. And I'm saying this from my heart too. Holy Spirit, I trust in you. I believe in you. I'm in love with you. And you alone, I trust to guide me. Save me from all error, from all confusion, from all compromise, from all sin, from, <clears throat> from the flesh. Save me from Satan. Save me from false teachers. Save me from the world. Save me from my own sinful passions. Holy Spirit, please. My life is yours. You are my life. I entrust myself and my family to you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And you'll never go wrong. Never go wrong. Guys, hit the like button. We were up to 210. We're down 140, man. See it? I told you. You can't last with me. Pray that if I made any mistakes, the Holy Spirit will correct it in me to repent and never repeat them. Pray the Holy Spirit guides me because I'm on a journey. I don't know how long I'll be on this journey. Maybe I die today and my journey ends and I enter the presence of Jesus. Or I may be allowed to sojourn with you for many years. But my trust is in the Spirit and I love the Holy Spirit and I trust in Him and I entrust myself and my daughters to the Holy Spirit. And I know if I'm in His hands... I'm in perfect hands. I'm in sovereign hands. I'm in the hands of the Almighty One, who is one with the Father and the Son, and He will never lead me astray. So trust in Him. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow, perhaps at 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Invite more people. Invite people. I want to see 300. Come on now. I'm jealous of David Wood. Not. Love you guys. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And guys, do me a favor. I'm not going to talk about these issues anymore. I'm tired. I really am. I'm really fried. Right now, I'm emotionally, mentally, physically drained. And it doesn't help. I'm alone too. Meaning physically, I'm alone. Spiritually, you're never alone. God is with you. But humanly speaking, I don't have my angels. And I'm all alone in my apartment. So it, it's hard. But by the power of the Lord Jesus, by the blood of the Lord Jesus, by the cross of the Lord Jesus, by the resurrection life of the Lord Jesus, by his peace, joy, and love that fills us, we will endure till the end. And do pray for my daughters that I will see them again. Christ is risen, risen indeed. We love you, Lord Jesus. Take care.